The GSC-13, known as the Galaxy Jade, was detected by the James Webb Space Telescope in September 2022. Subsequent spectroscopic assessments conducted by Webb's instruments in October confirmed the galaxy's redshift, determining it to be at Z equals to 13.2. This revelation meant that Webb observed the galaxy when the universe was approximately 13.4 billion years old, marking it as the oldest and most distant galaxy with spectroscopic confirmation. However, a paper published in April 2023 raised doubts, proposing that the object might not be a galaxy, but rather a dark star boasting a mass approximately a million times that of the Sun. The definitive classification of whether it is indeed a galaxy or a massive star awaits further scrutiny through ongoing studies. Prior to the discovery of GSZ-13, the most distant galaxy observed was GNZ-11, emerging a mere 350 million years after the Big Bang. Recent observations have unveiled that GSZ-13 hosts the most remote and ancient supermassive black hole within the observable universe. Nevertheless, an issue persists. Utilizing the James Webb Space Telescope, a consortium of astronomers has pinpointed the furthest and most ancient black hole to date, and it is actively devouring its host galaxy. This revelation signifies a monumental stride in unraveling the enigma surrounding the rapid accumulation of mass by supermassive black holes, reaching millions or even billions of times the mass of the Sun, particularly in the immediate aftermath of the Big Bang. Nestled within GNZ-11, this formidable black hole boasts a mass roughly 6 million times that of the Sun. Yet, intriguingly, it appears to be engorging matter from its galaxy at a rate five times greater than what prevailing theories deem sustainable. Roberto Molino, the team leader at the University of Cambridge Department of Physics, heralded the discovery as a significant leap forward for black hole science. He said, and I quote, It's very early in the universe to see a black hole that's massive, so we've got to consider other ways they might form. Very early galaxies were extremely gassy, so they would have been like a buffet for black holes. The emergence of supermassive black holes with such colossal sizes within the universe's first billion years presents a formidable challenge for formation theories. The perplexity arises from the realization that achieving a mass equivalent to millions or billions of times, that of the sun typically demands billions of years of uninterrupted feeding, thereby posing a significant conundrum for our existing models. How, then, did supermassive black holes attain such immense masses in such a relatively brief span of time? The Eddington limit, a mathematical formula akin to a speed limit for stars accumulating mass, imposes a constraint on the rate at which a star can gather mass. This rule dictates that a star can only accumulate mass up to a certain threshold before the light it emits exerts pressure pushing away additional material. Analogous to how a car encounters resistance as it approaches its maximum speed, this limit serves as a fundamental boundary. Although black holes do not emit light due to their confinement within an event horizon, their immense gravitational influence induces violent agitation and heating of the surrounding material, leading to the emission of radiation. As a black hole engulfs matter at an accelerated pace, the emitted radiation intensifies, forming a region known as an active galactic nucleus. Here, the Eddington limit comes into play, exerting a similar influence by repelling material and potentially curbing the black hole's feeding frenzy. However, the recently discovered black hole is defying expectations by accreting matter from GNZ-11 at a rate five times higher than the Eddington limit. While theoretically possible in brief and constrained intervals, this black hole demonstrates a continuous violation of this limit. 
The team behind this discovery believes that the power of the James Webb Telescope should help uncover more black holes in the early universe. The lead scientist concluded with a fascinating quote, I thought maybe the universe isn't so interesting when you go beyond what we could see with the Hubble Space Telescope. But that hasn't been the case at all. The universe has been quite generous in what it's showing us, and this is just the beginning. Upon the commencement of data transmission from the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists worldwide awaited eagerly, fully aware that the ensuing observations would likely challenge long-standing cosmic paradigms. These Webb observations are organized into various distinct programs. During a routine observation as part of the Uncover program, scientists came across three remarkably compact yet vividly red objects amidst the data. The potent Webb telescope utilized the galaxy cluster Abel 2744 as a foreground lensing body, enhancing the light from background galaxies typically too distant to discern. This process unveiled an intensely red quasar, initially appearing as three distinct red dots. Essentially, what appeared as three dots was a singular object distorted by gravitational lensing. Upon deeper analysis, the object revealed itself as a quasar, existing roughly 700 million years after the Big Bang. The dense cloud of gas and dust enveloping the black hole indicates its significant redshift. However, what truly piqued the astronomy team's interest was the black hole's mass, estimated to be around 40 million times that of the Sun, unexpectedly hefty compared to its host galaxy. Moreover, this black hole displays distinct characteristics not typically observed in counterparts from that era. Indeed, the analysis of the object's colors provided compelling evidence that it deviated from the characteristics of a typical star-forming galaxy. This bolstered the hypothesis that the red dot was indeed a supermassive black hole. Its compact size further reinforced this conclusion, suggesting it was likely a supermassive black hole. However, the lead scientist of the Uncover program noted that it still exhibited differences from other quasars found during that era. This discovery deepens the enigma surrounding the expansion of supermassive black holes in the early universe, which can grow to millions or even billions of times the mass of the Sun. A team of scientists from Oxford recently conducted a detailed analysis of observations of GNZ-11 made by the James Webb Space Telescope, offering a different perspective from the findings of the Cambridge Department. Their focus was on exploring alternative explanations for the observed emissions of carbon, neon, and nitrogen in the galaxy spectrum diverging from the conclusion drawn by the Cambridge group regarding the presence of a growing supermassive black hole. One crucial aspect of their analysis involved examining the ratio of light emitted by different molecules, particularly nitrogen and oxygen. The team noted a significant anomaly in the nitrogen to oxygen ratio in GNZ-11, reporting a four-fold increase compared to the current ratio observed in the present universe. This unusual abundance raised questions about the processes responsible for the distinct elemental composition of GNZ-11. To account for these anomalies, the team explored various scenarios, including tidal disruption events, TDEs, and runaway stellar collisions. TDEs occur when a star passes too close to a supermassive black hole and is shredded apart, leading to increased emissions. Runaway stellar collisions involve dense gas clouds forming massive stars, which undergo gravitational attraction, causing collisions and fusion of lighter elements into heavier ones. The Oxford team suggested that these alternative scenarios could potentially explain the observed emissions without requiring the presence of a growing supermassive black hole. 
they emphasized the significant uncertainties in interpreting the data and refrained from making definitive conclusions about the nature of GNZ11. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Spacebeat News for the latest updates on space discoveries and exploration.